In this chapter, we are going to discuss partial differential equations. The method we are going to use to solve a group of partial differential equations is called separation of variables. Let's take a look how a PDE can be generated. If we have a stream fixed at x equal to zero and x equal to L, and if we disturb the stream, the stream is going to vibrate up and down vertically. And uh, during the motion, we can describe the diffraction from the string's equilibrium position, horizontal positions. This diffraction is going to be a function of the position in the horizontal direction and also time. And the from force balance in the horizontal and the vertical direction, we will be able to generate a partial differential equation. Then we're going to use separation of variables to solve it. This is a called a PD because it involves partial derivatives. And uh, this is a second order ODE because <clears throat> the highest derivative in the equation is second order. Now uh, we can discuss a few terms that is associated with the characteristics of a PDE. We have discussed the order of PDE. Now, uh, let's look at linearity. Earlier this semester, we mentioned that linearity can be judged based on the dependent variables, how it appears in the equation. If only you, the dependent variable, and its derivative appear in first degree algebra power, then we call the equation a linear PD. If it's not, if it involves algebra power not equal to one, it's considered nonlinear. PD. Another term is uh, homogeneity. If uh, the given PDE involves either U and uh, its derivative and then no independent variables appear in the algebra format, in the PD, then it's called non homogeneous. Then let's look at these examples. At the end of this chapter, we shall be able to solve all of these PDEs. If you can see all of these six equations. Uh, second order ODE because the highest partial derivatives in these six equations are all second order, all second order. Next, um, we can tell only this equation is non homogeneous because. It has an algebra expression involving the 
independent variables only. So the, only this equation among the six uh, is considered non-homogeneous PD. And uh, later on, we're going to see um, this is uh, associated with uh, wave propagation or the string vibration. This equation, notice this is the first order uh, partial derivative u with respect to t. This dif differential equation as a whole is still a second order PD because highest order derivative is second order. This arises from heat conduction in solid. And uh, uh, all this will appear later on in our discussion. All these equations are considered linear. Uh, so separation of variable can be used to solve all these six equations. And we can easily demonstrate if we plug in this U into the equation three we discuss here, it is satisfy, all this satisfy equation three. So all of this can be considered the solution of that equation three. Of course, we will need to use boundary conditions to solve this, to find out the specific form of that PDE. One of the special property of a linear PDE is uh, if we find two independent solutions, then linear combination of these two solutions is going to be a solution of the PD also. Let's look at a few examples. Uh, this moment I'm going to use um, my study guide because my study guide has a solution of these examples in long form. In this example, uh, use with a subscript X designated derivative of U with respect to X. Since there's a derivative of U with respect to Y, we have to represent these derivatives in partial derivative form. And U is going to be a function of both X and Y. Equation three is the starting point of uh, using separation of variables. If uh, uh, the given partial differential equation is a linear, then we can always assume the solution can be separated, the U can be separate into a product of two parts. One part involves X only. The other part involves Y only. This is a universal starting point for this chapter. If we want to solve a PD, this is always the starting point. Then if we put the equation three into the given equation, we get this because G is independent of X. So we can take G out of this partial derivative. Similarly, F is independent of Y. So we can take F out of this partial derivative. 
So what we have is G times F prime plus F times G prime equal to zero. And another important step is to separate the variable. That's where the name of the method come from. The next step, we separate the variables. That means we separate the X from Y. So if we leave factors involving X on the left-hand side, and the leave factors involve Y on the right-hand side, we get this equation. And then we realize this equation comes from the assumption, and if this works, this method, this solution F and G need to satisfy a wide range of X and Y. However, the right-hand side is a function of Y only. The left-hand side of this equation is a function of X only. In order for this equation to satisfy a wide range of X and Y, both sides need to be a constant, a common constant. Then if we use, uh, if we expand, if we look at uh, F and X, uh, K, we get the first equation. If we equating the factors involving Y and the K, we get this equation. Notice <clears throat> F prime is the derivative of F with respect to X. It's F doesn't depend on Y. So we get this equation when we solve the, when we move F to the other side and express F in the long form, we get this expression. And the solving F, we get this expression. And the similarly, for the factor involving Y, the G part, we can use similar argument by saying g prime equal to a ordinary derivative of g with respect to y, we get this ordinary differential equation, which can be integrated easily. Then finally, we can combine based on the assumption uh, that the u is a product of f and the g. This will be the solution of the given PD, we can simply substitute this expression in equation two to prove this indeed is the solution. Let's look at another example. If we have a second order partial derivative of u, with respect to x and y, minus u equal to zero. Notice we start by using the second, another, the same approach by assuming u is a product of f and g. Then we put the equation two into equation one. We get equation three. The next step, as we used for the last example, we put all the factors involving X on one side, leaving all the factors involving Y on the right-hand side. We get this expression. However, the left-hand side is a function of X only. The right-hand side is a function of Y only. This equation comes from this assumption and the solution 
must satisfy a wide range of X and Y. So we, the only situation we can find a solution is to let both sides equal to a constant, X, a K. Then we expand, we get two ordinary differential equations like we had for the last example. And this two first order ODE can be easily integrated and, uh, and uh, we can then combine to form the solution. Again, we can plug in this solution back into the given PD. We can verify this solution is indeed the solution we want to generate. This concludes this session. And uh, next session, we are going to discuss the string vibration problem in more detail.